But it's a really important question. Yeah, I mean, it's something that everyone has a wrestle with their conscience uh, when they when they sort of. Uh, I do understand what you're talking about. I think we're on, aren't we? Yeah, we're on. Okay. Okay. So I just talked about like what what if you're like filling out benefit forms, you're doing something, and you want to keep integrity, but you maybe for example you're you're applying for benefits. Well, I think there is a perfect way of knowing where the line is. I think it's, it's quite a complicated thing. Now, we know that in tech, you know, you, one must maintain integrity. Uh, uh, what do I sort of see as integrity? Well, usually, it's a great, it's a, it's a, it, there is, there, there's levels of complexity. What if you're filling in a benefit? Where is the line between literal honesty and also um, also doing things. And I think it's a bit more blurred than always being 100% honest uh, when you're filling out forms. But also it's like, I think as well uh, for people who are doing things like that, you know, one mustn't be, one, you know, I think with, when, when we're doing muscle testing, kinesiology, you always ask if something is in the interest of the highest good. So that must be, because God's will is in the interest of the highest good for everyone to do. There are situations, I'm, I'm going to answer a, question, answer a question in a very odd way, because uh, you'd probably think I'd probably say, like, in every single situation, be 100% honest. But it's not what I'm going to say, because there, are, there is context to a situation. Uh, ultimately, everything that one does should be in the interest of the highest good of all concerned. So... So generally speaking, if you're in doubt, be honest, uh, or get a spiritual advisor, or get someone who can do muscle testing, and that will give you a black and white answer. But I'd like to give context to answering these forms. I mean, it's like, I'm just talking in generalities, I mean, it's like if you're in Nazi Germany, I was, this is my one I usually talk about, if you're in Nazi Germany, and the Nazis are in power, and someone knocks at your door, and says, are there any Jewish girls in the cellar? You know, it's, what is God's will in that situation? Is God's will to be literally 100% honest and say, yes, I have to be honest at all times, otherwise I am not doing God's will. So the, uh, the Jewish girls downstairs in the cellar. So, uh, and then you let, let them take her to the gas chamber. I'm being honest. So honesty in that context so honesty is in the, what is God's will and what is in the interest of the highest good of all concerned. And, you know, obviously, even though the, the context of literal honesty with the Jewish girl, because the context is it's Nazi Germany and there is a person's life at risk. So literal honesty in that situation is a very easy one to say. No, I think nearly everyone would not have like a loss of conscience to lie to the, to the Nazis and say the girl's down. They're not going to be struck down by lightning from God. Uh, you know, in 12-step groups, we talk about not to be selfish. I think there's a, there's a level with situations where you have to take a, what, the, the larger context into, situ, into a situation. I mean, it's like um, uh, there is a thing of... Um, uh, and you know, I have to be careful in this video that I do not, res I don't sort of encourage people to be, to do anything again. You know, ultimately, you should only do what's in your con, what your conscience allows. But I think speaking to advisors, speaking to a spiritual mentor, or speaking to someone who can do muscle testing, can help you find the exact line around things. I mean, I always think, you know, when I talk to people, that if people are on a spiritual path. Um, and are trying to become better. There are sometimes situations where, if you're literally honest, it'll mean it'll destroy your life, mm -hmm. you know. And if you're given a space, you can get well and do more for society than if you become 100% literally honest now. And that will mean that you don't get the opportunity to contribute more later on, if that makes sense. So I think the, you know, and this can only be done 
you know, by muscle testing or speaking to spiritual advisor or speaking to somebody who has more wisdom than you to get the context so you can resolve, uh, resolve the grey areas of life. In a certain area, should you exaggerate slightly so it gives you a bit of space? But then also for me, I think if it's going to allow me to do more good uh, for society and for God, then, uh, then you know, it's something that should be taken into consideration. Uh, like, um, uh, and I think, you know, society does, you know, there's a thing of like, um, when, pe when people are willing and they want to get, to get well, I, I personally think they should be given every opportunity to get well. But when people are not willing to, take in, not willing to get well to, to better their lives and to serve the higher good and to serve God, then I think it's a, you know, they are a, essentially they're a drain on society. So if somebody is like sincerely wanting to get well and to be in those divine states and to do good, then really, if I, if I was in charge of the benefit system, I would say like, if there's a way of seeing that this person wants to get well and contribute, they should be given every single opportunity to do that. But if a person is someone who just wants to take as much as they can and then take even more and not take responsibility and not serve a higher purpose for their life, I think all that happens with them is they just take. And I think that's something that's not done. So these are very sort of complex, complex questions. I think, you know, if, you're, if one is in a complex situation, I think having a spiritual mentor, otherwise, you know, the, the ego can be very, very um, critical and self-judgmental. And so if we can't access information for a higher context, <coughs> Hawkins was very, very good. You know, he always talks about content and context. Like if you say to someone, uh, like lying under all circumstances is bad and you should always tell the literal truth in every single circumstance you live. This is the law. And, and if you don't, if you never say the literal truth in every circumstance, you'd be struck dead by God with lightning in the next moment. That, is not, that doesn't take context into the situation, into, into situation. So then that would mean that if you're in, suddenly the situation changed and the Nazis take power and they wanted to kill all the Jew, Jews in, in the country, that would mean that you'd have to be literally honest as the soldiers are knocking on your door with all, where all the Jews are. Do you know of any Jews in the local vicinity that are hiding behind bushes or in cupboards? Yeah, I saw a Jew behind the bush there, and there's one hiding in the garden, in the shed. So I've been literally honest. So there is a higher context of truth. Like God's will, what is God's will? What is the right thing to do? Like when you leave, um, are, you, are you okay in your soul that you've done the right thing? So it's not always, it's not as easy as you think. But if you have access to... Muscle testing will always tell you 100% accurately if you've got someone. Because it's like there is the thing that you don't understand when you're in your ego and you have limited thoughts that you're running by is you don't have feel to the intuitive collective wisdom of all of divinity. So you don't know actually whether, you know, you're not sure whether saying yes or no will be better for the whole planet or not in any single context. So. You, you have to do the best. If you didn't have anything, then you have to do the best with your conscience. If you don't have access to a muscle tester, you don't have a spiritual advisor. But um, I come from an addiction background. An addiction is always like you're doing something for, for the short term without seeing the longer term picture. So I think if, and also you, if people have a high spiritual intent and want to take responsibility, it's good that I think it's good they'd be given the opportunity to get well so they can serve, then to cut their opportunity to, to not give them a chance to get well before they can serve, uh, I think is not useful. But it's, it's a really important question, because if you do something that is below integrity knownly uh, in order to deceive, um, and, and you're trying to get away with it, it can mean that your level of consciousness uh, drops below integrity. And this can be very damaging for, for you and everyone because you get influenced by rationalization and denial. 
So, um, so it's it's a complicated answer, um, and I'm on video. So, so that those are the things that that would come to me. It's like you know, um, uh, obviously, uh, in terms of God's will, it's always serving the highest good. And what is God's will? You need to take into account context. There isn't like a black and white like. You should, you should always tell the truth in every single situation and then you'll be doing God's will. Because I've just given the example of Nazi Germany, like lying in Nazi Germany, like everyone would know, like, you, you know, would you feel better to have told the truth and for the Jew to die in the gas chamber the next day? So it can't be, there has to be a higher context. And also, um, so that, that's, that, that, that's what's coming through. I had, you know, I had a lot of spiritual dilemmas Having spiritual dilemmas, you know, I, I'm in a 12-step group, so you have spiritual sponsors. And that was really, really great. You know, I would, I would go, like, if I do this thing, I'd say to my mentor, sponsor, am I bad if I do that thing? And he goes, no, you're not bad if you do that thing, because he can see from a detached point of view. Whereas I'd be like, oh, no, if you do, if you do, um, unless, because you have this narrow context of seeing things and judging yourself. So I, th I found that having a spiritual mentor was very, very helpful, you know, like uh, uh, in resolving spiritual conflict uh, within oneself because they can, they, they love you and they want the best for you, they don't want, but they also they don't want you to do anything that's wrong. So they're able to give you much. And then often he would say things to me and I think, oh, I have to do this, otherwise I'll, be, I'll not be spiritually perfect. I'd have this thing. And I'd say it to him, he says, it's okay, don't worry, you, you know, and he'd say that it's okay. So he's my spiritual mentor, so if he says it's okay, I can let the guilt go, that I wasn't spiritually perfect in this situation. And I'd sigh a relief, because my ego would be like, you should be 100% spiritually perfect in all situations, and if you weren't, that means you're very, very bad, you know, and you should punish yourself. So that was a way of resolving, uh, resolving spiritual perfectionism.